say that so many of these things overlap that it, it's hard to say which is which and, and exactly what year it was. It's just it's kind of more the progression of how uh, times were changing. Um, this particular one is it's really, uh, you know, we're getting to things that we might recognize or might even actually want to wear. And that <laughs> it has a little peek-a-boo arm slits mm -hmm. in it. And uh, a really nice velvet. And this is simplistic <laughs> compared to the others. Um, that goes along with the fact that you had help, as we were saying, with dresses and, and if you, now in the valley, maybe not, but you were always either in a big family and you had a sister that helped you dress, or you would hire somebody. And this is how immigrants, when they came in, they started washing clothes, cleaning house, that type of thing. And then a, ge and a generation later, by the time they got married and had kids, they would have enough money and they made their way up. So we had people who would, um, you could almost always have someone to come in and help with the housework or whatever. Um, the number one thing, if you have any extra money, was having the wash done. Women, that ruined your hands <laughs> with all the heating of it. And that's why um, you'd have a, a washerwoman or, or we had the Chinese that came in. And that's where they, after they were in the mines, they decided, hey, it was easier to do wash for people. And they, they did all the laundry. And we didn't have a fabrics like now. Um, this is another one that's kind of fun. Finally, we get some color. <laughs> I mean, everything has been so fun. And we're beginning. The idea of women wearing lounge pants, lounging, and that type of thing. So this was the beginning of um, out, sports outfits or whatever that w women would start wearing pants. Never men's looking pants. They were always velvet or something that would uh, make them look like a, a lady. in the 30s, 40s. And he was getting rid of his wife's clothing. And he gave it down to another family and took it to that home. And it would kind of passed around and eventually ended up at a museum. And his last name was Putnam. And he was married to Amelia Earhart. And so this is our connection. <laughs> To an Amelia Earhart dress, huh. in the sense that she came along, she was doing the flying, she was doing wearing those pants over there, or slacks. They didn't wear Levi's yet, it was slacks, women's slacks, and they were cut correctly. But this is one of her dresses that she started a whole line of clothing. And so um, we don't know if this was one that she had or just one of. Uh, the dresses that were in her line of clothing. And there again, it's the thin, back to the thin, uh, the crepe, and masculine somewhat, you know, straight, plain, but still having that little, the little flare of the bow tie and the uh, embroidery and stuff on it. So that's uh, the museum. We're kind of seeing it. There's some shoes or something. Um, going down the brown and white ones, this I brought all the accessories, but it would take us forever if I went through all my accessories. My kids kept saying, Mom, you're on another dress. They only have some shine. Anyway, and we're starting into the spectators and the round and the kind of clunky heels. And these are Red Cross shoes. That was a big deal. That was, they were good for you. Yeah, so if you could afford a pair of Red Cross spectators, I have some. 
<laughs> but I was so excited to get a pingling on crazy. I go, oh, anyway. <laughs> so that uh, is, we're working right along. Okay. That's